Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. The aftermath of every social revolution brings about change. Cultural norms and landmarks shift as our minds and hearts are familiar. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose in the land of the living. This is our time to renew, revive, and restore the hope lost to the busyness of life. This is our time to dig again and rebuild from the storms of our past on a solid footing that holds. Welcome to The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation of Heart Grant is brought to you by Alive, Bonneville Bones, Burger King, Commonwealth Bank, ESC Distributors Limited, Grand Bahama News, the IAAF, World Relays Bahamas, and Marcos Pizza. The Foundation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant in your company, the foundation. It's a beautiful Tuesday afternoon, live and in full effect, always eager, excited, elated to kind of join you and join in the national discussion for growth and development. I'm always happy to do that. Always happy to have these kind of a conversation with you. I am grateful that you let me into your space, your place. Praise God for you. You're a good and dedicated birthday today, April 16th. I pray that the Father continues to be able to bless you, to lift you up, that you move from glory to glory, that, you know, the hedge of protection continues to stay around you, and you move on to the purpose that you've been called to in this life before you leave here, before your eyes are closed and that eternal, that long good night. I pray that you fulfill that purpose that you've been called to. Come on, talk to me. I think a lot of us forgot or never really amalgamated and really pulled ourselves into a thought that we are here for a greater purpose. So I got to encourage you to do that. I'm grateful to be here with you. I got to shout out to my good, decent people. Make sure you pick up your Guardian newspaper, all the information is in there for us to be able to kind of chop this thing down and do what we do on a regular basis. It says crime down 21%. In 2023, but rapes are up by 11%. So we see that while overall crime was down, I, I think we need to know the variations of this crime. Let's read the report. While overall crime was down by 21%, 23% in 2023 compared to 2022, um, rapes were up by 11%. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernandez said yesterday, noting that 56% of the reported rapes knew their alleged attackers. This is all categories of crime were down in 2022 except rape. Fernanda noted that his annual meet the press uh, at the police headquarters that the statistics showed that crimes against the persons were down by 26% and murder was down by 14%. Um, do we cling to the semantics? Do we cling to the incremental shifts to give us some sense of alleviation is sort of an idea that we're doing, my God, we're doing better. 0.2%. We're doing better by 3%. Do we cling to that? Or is there an overarching objective to identify those things but still push forward with uh, this sort of a course to change the mindset, change the environment, uh, the charge? of where we exist. Uh, I'm going to touch it just a little bit. I have a guest, supposed to have a guest coming in. So before I dive into anything, I'm going to take my time and see if he actually shows up to be able to have this kind of a conversation with you. I'm grateful for that. Um, uh, so I'm just going to be able to wait. Like I said, make sure you pick up your Guardian newspaper. More information's in there. Two murdered in separate incidents. Uh, Turnquest says, I am vindicated. That is bananas, sir. It is absolutely bananas. Vindication should not be able to spew from your own lips. Talk to me. I just want to be decent as I say this. Kaden. <laughs> you should never be able to kind of fall off your, your lips because it feels like branding and an attempt to socially condition you in a contrary position. Whether that you may be vindicated or not, I don't think 
especially uh, at an elevated position that you were, and the perceived fall from grace. Let's just be decent. Tim Grace is my guy. But the social perception as it relates to being able to fall from grace like a lightning bolt from heaven, talk to me, and an elevated position as Deputy Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas with uh, the frugal attempt that you've taken from a financial standpoint to identify those things that you have and now to look back in retrospect within yourself and come to the forefront and say that I have been vindicated. I think it's peculiar. Let's talk like this. We have good conversation today. Got to shout out my good, decent people over at AFS Insurance Agents and Brokers. They got everything laid out for you. Make sure you check them out. Um, taxis, jitneys, SDs, leggies, whatever you got, they could insure that thing for you. Make sure you take good care of those things. They got in-house financing. So if you're looking to make this sort of a next step in your life, right? If you're looking to be able to really tap into this entrepreneurialism rather than being able to rent your wife car on the weekend, They'll just be decent. Y'all got two car. You say you in the SD company, if car, and tell her she can't go nowhere <laughs> for the weekend. My God, if the people ask you for the car for three days, if you are looking to expand beyond that point, because you're going through the hustle, you're going through the hustle, now you're looking to expand. You got five cars now. They're on the boat right now from China, and you're ready to be able to make these moves. Go down to AFS Insurance Agents and Brokers. They can insure your vehicles. And if you ain't got all the money up front, in-house financing. This is the thing that you want to be able to talk about, right? They got in-house financing. They can take very good care of you. I'm excited to have these kind of conversations with you. Go and check them out. 341-1AFS, 341-1AFS. And before we go further, I want you to check that thing out. Go down there to Da Vinci's Printers and Innovators. They got everything right there in the Village Road Shopping Plaza, right there on Burnett Road, Village Road, right there on the intersection, right there. They are top of the line. You got graphics. You got printing. You got everything in there. A little small trinket so you can be able to do stuff in, uh, stocking stuffers uh, for birthdays, so forth and so on. It is top notch. These people are connected to the community. They're connected to faith. You want to be able to spend your money with them. I guarantee you, you will be absolutely satisfied. Go, go down there and check out Da Vinci. They are all over social media. Get, they got good stuff in there, man. Guys, please check them out. See exactly what's what. Let them know that the foundation sent you guys down there so you can be able to see exactly. And um, uh, if you are in the market and you want to kind of talk about your stuff, hit me up, 827-0111, 827-0111. I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, um, well, my guest is here, and I want to kind of dive into these conversations uh, to do this today, right? We're grateful to do this and grateful to kind of have these great conversations with you guys and always talk about what's happening. Now, this is a kind of a one-off. You know that we always identify these things. We always identify these things on Thursday, right? We always identify these things on Thursdays for you to be able to, to, to have good conversation with. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with none other than, than Danny Johnson. He's here with us to be able to talk about some great stuff that's going to be happening over, his, over to his place. He gives me a flyer now. Um, they got ticket price and all this information. Oh, well, no, this is Dr. Danny Johnson. We're talking about, why did I think that we're going to be talking about um, um, orthopedics and, 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 and this, oh, this world reader, you come, to, this the ticket's for me, or this I give it to people. Well, that's up to you. My God, you throw it down like Whatever you decide to do. I'm not going to fight you. Say good afternoon to the people out there. Sit down on the mic. Good afternoon, people out there. I got one more thing for you. <laughs> so I got to give you the whole picture, man. You got a t-shirt and everything? I don't got the shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We're here with the World Athletic Relays. You got all the information. Bahamas 24. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Chase the Sun, Paradise to Paris, May 4th to the 5th, 2024. Thomas A. Robinson National. Buy your tickets now. The World Relays, Bahamas 2024.org. All the information's in there. Hashtag Paradise to Paris. You can find them on Facebook, find them on Instagram, find them all over the place. Danny, this could fit my son. You need to stop, I right? <laughs> I appreciate this, right? <laughs> this is a beautiful shirt, man. You got to see, you got to get the design, the feel, the piece, the color. We ain't playing with this thing. It's on. This is absolutely gorgeous, man. I yeah. want to thank you so much That's for being brand. able to do this. That's so talk to me about it. Talk to me about so what are the things that we could expect as it relates to what's happening with Chase the Sun? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having us on. Absolutely. Um, Bahamas, we are back. You know, we had the IAAF World Relays. 
on three occasions in the past, um, we would have kind of lost it, and uh, PM asked me to go and go get it back. So we went and got it back. This is the world of athletics, the most exciting event in athletics, in track and field, during an Olympic year where everyone is going to Paris, France. And the Olympic qualifier, the qualifier to get to Paris, France for the Olympics will happen May 4th and 5th. Here. Thomas A. Robinson Stadium. Right here in the, in the Bahamas. Nassau, Bahamas. This is exciting stuff. That's what I'm talking about. You know something? Everybody will be here. Not some. Every. I always identify when this administration is in, we know that there is significant celebration that's going to be happening. You've always identified how you can be able to amplify the Bahamas significantly and bring this thing back. Talk to me about the course that it took for you to be able to bring this thing back here to the country. Well, you know... They got that phrase, one man trash is another man treasure. So it just depends on how you look at it. And the, when you look at our tourism product, we got a product called It's Better in the Bahamas. Yes. We, are yet, we have betrayed our future generations. Our generation now is going to stand up and say, what's better in the Bahamas? My God. Yeah, don't just say it and, you, and leave me with well, conch shell on a beach. Well, a lot of people got conch shell on beaches in this world. Right? Wow. A lot of people got music. A lot of people got hotels and casinos. We are saying we have something that no one else has. And this is where we go and really amplify and create, negotiate, innovate on what we can do as a people with the best partners in the world. So this is a simple engagement. We say our brand, It's Better in the Bahamas, is one of the best brands in the world. World-class oh. brand. We partner now with another brand mm -hmm. that is a world-class brand called IAAF, used to be now World Athletics. Mm -hmm. We did it with FIFA for beach soccer. We filled that place. There is economic stimulus. There is the marketing value. This is 172 countries will be watching this for one week in the world. The broadcast rights are, I mean, this is a global event. The people who are going to come here have never been to the Bahamas. There are money that will be spent here that has never been seen in the Bahamas. These people are already here. The Indian team, which is one of the fastest growing economies in the Bahamas, is here. They've been here for a week. They have a camp. They're training. They're, spending, they're paying for the, everything for themselves. This is why you do these things. I want to talk to you about this. Uh, there has to be an overarching objective. I know that... Uh, from a touristic standpoint, um, over the course of the last three administrations, there has been sort of a push for diversification within tourism. So we wanted to see more religious tourism. And I think it started with, am I correct? Did it start with your administration with uh, Perry Christie? Yes, sir. Sport, okay. We call it, we, I, we branded it Sports in Paradise. Sports in Paradise. Okay, yes, right? Hence so, the term here. From paradise to Paris. to Paris. I like this, right? But tell me about this. Tell, tell me the overarching objective, right? Because it can't be for a quick sputter. It can't be for quick recognition. There has to be longevity, sustainability, growth, expansion, opportunity, identification. What is the overarching goal of being able to recognize uh, the Bahamas and synonymously being able to pair and tether a particular brand that we have? Well, the first part is an internal um, rationale. So when you look at us as a country, right, a couple hundred thousand people on these rocks and keys in the middle of the Atlantic, we have more gold medals, world championships than any other country per capita right now mm -hmm. reigning. Mm -hmm. When you look at us next, in two weeks Saturday on the 4th also, will be the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. The only black trainer ever to be there will be there again for the 150th running of the Kentucky Derby. He is a Mr. Larry Williams. He is from Mason's Edition, Nassau, the Bahamas. This horse is named Saratoga. Mm -hmm. Look here, man, we got a story to tell. We had a Sydney point here. We, got all these, we have a story to tell about ourselves. So it's a storytelling that you first do and appreciate what your people have in them, then you prepare them to go out into the world because it's globalization. You got to have something to sell. You got to have a product. The main thing is your story. What sets you apart from the rest? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can go to Miami or Atlanta, go watch the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it. Or you can watch it on TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're saying we have something that's so special, it's like a Wimbledon. 
It's like Daytona Beach 500. It's like Speed Week. You want to see this. Netflix will be here next week or the week after doing a series called The Fastest People on Earth in Nassau, the Bahamas. Do you know how much people have Netflix accounts? Don't remind me. Well, they remind me monthly. <laughs> but, but, but do you know? And, <laughs> they tell me monthly. And you know, you know how far that's going to go? This thing concludes in Nassau, the Bahamas, man. So this is the value of your product. And let's face it, we're good at tourism. We can get better, and we have to add some things to it. So I've always felt this is a simple addition. Now, it's only one sport here, but there are others. So I think, I'm of the opinion, sports and entertainment, we should be having, we are a global brand. Let's face it, no joke, it's better than the Bahamas, is a global brand. We should be hosting something every month. And this is how it works, man. The Rolling Stones, who I've seen three times, is the oldest touring band in the world. They've been on tour for 52 years. All their show is, is a, it's a world tour. All of sports and entertainment is always on tour. The Bahamas as a brand is worthy of a spot on the world tour. I like this, you know. You I like it. You'll get it right away. And the tour comes, the they, Bahamas, they bring the whole thing with them, the show comes to town. Now, you got to figure out how you make money when the show comes to town. Only because you mentioned the Rolling Stones, the Bahamas as a brand is worthy of a stop, no matter what you do. That the Rolling Stones should be here also. Anybody. That you two should be able to come here also. Anybody. That we shouldn't just have the fire festival. Anyway, that's a different story, right? <laughs> just won't be decent. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I, I want to talk like that. That's the that's the reason. Yeah, we're world class brand. Now, now Tiger talk to Woods, me. who could have a tournament anywhere in the world, he chose his birthday weekend to come to Nassau, the Bahamas, to host the top twenty golfers in the world. Yeah, Michael Jordan, who could go anywhere he wants in the world. Yeah, he used to choose Paradise Island to come and host his thing there. Sydney McPhee, who is in town now, President Sydney McPhee of MTSU, he, he negotiated for us in the Bahamas. We are the only country in the world outside the continental United States where any NCAA sport can be played. Now, let me ask you this question, though, I'm, uh, because I love this, and I, I want you guys to be able to support this. I'm going to put all the information out to let you know you can buy your tickets now. All the information's in there. I got two tickets available for you. Let me be decent. I got four tickets. I was going to take two. <laughs> no, I was going to take two. He's a black man, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got four tickets available for you guys. We're going to open up the lines so you can be able to give me a call and uh, give me some information that we may not have. We got two. Got, my God. Okay. okay. We, we still got four. Eh? Praise God, right? Oh, we got more tickets, right? Yeah, okay. We got six tickets now. I, I don't, I don't want to make a liar of you. No, no, no. <laughs> we got six tickets. Call me now. I want you guys to be able to talk. About, but, Danny, I want to talk to you about this. Dr. Danny, I, w- I want to talk to you about this. I, I want to talk to you about... Um, there's one of the things that I've actually recognized, and, and whilst we have you here, just a quick conversation, whilst we're promoting this, mm-hmm. uh, just to be able to charge the spirits and the minds of the Bahamian people to understand the importance of the next step that we have to take. Uh, the Bahamas has been very good of being able to identify opportunities, right? So mm-hmm. we're good at acquisition. We're good of, of being able to pitch you and get the, the buy-in. Mm-hmm. But one of the issues that we've had is being able to retain that. Uh, yes. The longevity, the sustainability, uh, the consistency in those areas. Uh, what kind of conversations are happening right now as it relates to being able to ensure? Because I'm looking at this. I'm looking at, we don't know what money coming from this, but it got to go back into maintenance. It got to yes. go back into retention mm-hmm. and the the, 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 the efficits, right? The, the, the cathedral concepts and ideas mm-hmm. of being able to see these, these great monuments when people come here. They got to be up kept. Yeah. How are we thinking about that in terms of going forward? So, so we've, we've had some, once again, we had some great partnerships. Um, we now have, if you remember, we used to have the, the old Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, that little one in where it presently sits now. You know, we did a partnership with the People's Republic of China. We got this new wonderful stadium. It did fall down on the maintenance, so we had to go back. We did another deal for uh, maintenance repair. We're training a whole new group of people on maintaining this new facility. We now have a new baseball. Baseball is coming in the summer, by the way. They have the Cal Ripken Jr. And that's beautiful. Tournament. It's a beautiful facility. So the trick how this works is you got to use it or you lose it. 
the way you maintain things, just as I say, every month, yeah. I got to send you, if, if I told you every month you're having a dinner party at your house, you know that you yard got to clean. Yeah, clean up. You know, the front door can't be rickety, yeah. rickety. The windows got to be open yeah. and closed. The bathroom's got to be ready. Yeah. But if I do, say, well, once a year, which is what cycle we in I think sometimes. You can, I need to fix it when you say you're coming. Yeah, we can do it. Then you might. The week before you come, maybe. The week before I come, you do, do the junk and paint up, clean up, and you go to the bathroom, the bathroom ain't working. Mm-hmm. That's what we're in now in the Bahamas. So the way to get past that is to amplify your product and talk about the economy. So I want people to understand, we're pushing into the business of sports and entertainment. When fellas realize it's the business they're in, if you're mm-hmm. a tile layer, you want to lay tile once a year? No. You're in construction, you want to build one house a year? No. You want to build house every week? You want to start a new house? Mm-hmm. So if you get people into the business of this thing, we will see more events coming. There are thousands of events out there that we could host. Everybody won't come to the Bahamas. People need to start owning these events. The government has taken it on as economic and idea stimulus, but we now need fellas to say, look, I got a little MLS team who, who was on tour. We got a, a country, I got a country music group that does a blues festival that's on tour, and we want them to stop. You got to, you know, everyone should just see how they can do this. I agree with you. Because we got a captive audience who comes off these ships and out of these hotels. Yeah. And let's face it, they keep telling us one thing about the Bahamas. Boy, it's pretty, and you people are nice. But it's but nothing to do. Ain't nothing to do. You it's should believe people that if you tell you a hundred times. So we're bringing mm-hmm. them now something to do. And I want Bahamians to come out. I need them to realize two things about this event. One, this is the world coming to the Bahamas to put on a show. I want them to come out to let Bahamians show the world our support for Team Bahamas. I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be able to participate. We got six tickets here. We want you to be able to do that. These are beautiful tickets from May 4th. May 4th. And this is Sunday, May 5th at 7 p.m. Um, all this information's in there for the adult. They got everything for you. Please, 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 the first six people to give me a call. Um, uh, you know, I don't do all these kind of... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't do all these things, right? Probably six people give me a call, you can get the tickets, right? Yeah, so you, come get your if, ticket. If you are interested in it, we'll be able to put this in the envelope for you uh, and take good care of you. So uh, please give me a call. Um, uh, we can be... Lines are going to be wide open. I'd like you to do that while uh, Dr. Danny Johnson is here with us, being able to talk to us ex- about exactly what's what. 3236 325-4259, anywhere from the Family of Islands, 242-300-5720. And, um, well, I'm not going to give you the text because I'm not going to, you know, put anything aside for you for the text. Okay? <laughs> so please give me a call. The lines are wide open. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hi, Howard. Good afternoon. Hey, my dear. What's up with you? I call him from a ticket. I like you. I like reading. <laughs> we sound black <laughs> together. Praise God. <laughs> All right, so leave your information with, I got one ticket here for you, so leave your information with uh, the producer. He'll put your nu- your name and number down, everything like that. I'll put it on the envelope and leave it downstairs with Jenny, and can, you can be able to pick that up. Can I ask that you offer her a pair so she doesn't have you, to come alone? You wanna, Okay, okay, let's offer yeah, you a pair. Yeah, so so you, you get two oh. tickets, so baby. she doesn't come alone. We don't want you to, to, to be there alone. Praise God. We don't want you to come by yourself. Yeah. All right. So I don't want to church alone. So you don't I can't church come alone. alone. Praise God. Right. <laughs> so leave your number and information with the uh, the producer, and I'll leave this right downstairs for you. Okay. Also, you. also text me eight two seven zero one one one. You know my number. Text me and tell me how I don't forget my ticket, so I can put that down there for you. Okay. Uh, next telephone caller. Caller on the line. Go ahead. I need those tickets. You need those tickets. I got it right here for you. I thank okay. you so much. Yes, uh, my name my name is Carolyn Moss. Hey, Carolyn, how you doing? Hey, Carolyn. Very well, thank you. I need those tickets. Shouts out to Doctor Daddy Johnson. He's here saying hey to you. Yeah, I know Carolyn. Hey, Carolyn. he knows you. Hey, Doc, how are yeah, you? Very Praise well. God. Very All well. right, Miss Moss, we got the tickets right here for you. We're going to give you a pair, also. Okay. Thank you much. That's no problem. We got Amen. everything here. Okay, so that's two tickets gone, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Two tickets gone. <laughs> two sets of tickets. Two sets. Gone. All right? But the people say two twins. Two twins. <laughs> right? Let's be able to do this. The next one. Telephone call on the line. Go ahead. Greetings, everybody. Hello, Howard. Hi. Dr. Johnson. How you doing? Hi, ma'am. I, I'm doing great. Hey. I'm so happy 
If I got the two tickets. You got the two Amen. tickets. I, I appreciate your prophetic <laughs> approach. I appreciate your prophetic approach. You your prophetic approach. I'm so happy I got the two tickets. Amen. Your pastor, thank you, thank you. Your pastor told you how to do that well. <laughs> Well, congratulations, my dear. No, don't give me your name. But tell me your name now so we can be able to put it down. Tell me your name if you don't mind. Okay, Angela Aubrey. Angela Aubrey. Okay, Miss Aubrey, we got everything here for you. you Leave your exciting. information with the producer right here. And then okay. they can be able to take care of you. I'll leave your name and, and the tickets is going to be downstairs for you when you are when you're available right here and you're in the area of Guardian Radio. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Angela Aubrey. Yes. Okay, Ms. Aubrey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. That's Angela Aubrey, Carolyn Moss, and you should have had the first one. Carolyn. Carolyn, I don't know whether or not I actually uh, hung up on you accidentally. Please call back and have the producer take your information. Carolyn Moss, Angela Aubrey. Mm. People are always excited for these particular things, you know. Yeah. Um, um, but I, we need them to participate. Absolutely. These things are affordable, guys. There's a website. What's the website the persons can be able to pick it up on? Yeah, the we website is really easy access. It is worldrelaysbahamas24.org. Worldrelaysbahamas24.org. Also, the box office is at the Andre Rogers Stadium. So that's right there, right behind the stadium because we got... Uh, intense renovations happening. We're cleaning up, fixing up paint. We don't want no one walking on. Oh, we're ready now. If you you pass, the roof is. We don't take the roof up, put another roof on. We're ready, man. You good to go. The track, the track is being laid now. Brand new track. This track is one of a kind. This is the template of the track that we will unveil in at the Paris Olympics. Mm -hmm. So this quality and technology will be the first time it's ever been run on by anyone anywhere on this planet. Mm -hmm. And then the second time you'll see it in Paris, France. In Paris, mm -hmm. right? This is exciting stuff. You you always go all out for these things. Uh, is there anything in the works for what we can anticipate, what's going to be able to happen um, next year, the year after, so forth and so on? Well, not, I wouldn't even go as far as next. Well, for World Relays, next year, this is going to be interesting. So this idea of passing a baton, we got to play with a little bit in our national psyche. As you know, the fastest people don't always win this race. Mm -hmm. It is the people who pass the baton most efficiently, mm -hmm. right? And we want to bring that into our national conversation about handing on information, handing on blessings. Um, and so this will now go to Guangzhou, China, in this next edition, I think in a year or two. I've been there. Well, I saw it from a distance. Oh, I was distance. right there. Nice. And then it'll, we're trying to negotiate back to Nassau, Bahamas, in preparation for Olympics 20 in Los Angeles, California, USA. Uh, once again, an Olympic um, qualifier. And we have a couple more events, but this summer we have baseball coming. We got a big soccer event coming for the stadium this summer. Um, we have basketball, as you know, our, our Olympic team is getting ready uh, for their debut. And if we are all healthy, watch out for Team Bahamas in that regard. We have um, nationals uh, in many different sports, but we're going back at NCAA sports. We can try and see if we can hold on to Popeye's Bowl, bring some more American football, baseball, winter baseball once the season is over. We'll have professional baseball coming to our stadium. Um, we get uh, drag racing. We have uh, a couple more things coming in terms of the, the use of base, sorry, softball for our ladies NCAA teams. You have golf in the back there now. We got golf in our national stadium. We will see high school, nationals, college events coming in that area. Um, and we just have a lot to do in this sports park where we want families to be able to come out on a regular basis and enjoy it. So these events are going to come every few months so people can get involved. The economic stimulus is, of course, hotels, heads and beds, taxi cabs. Food. I was about to ask you this. Um, and then the vendors, every event like this has about 40 or 50 at the stadium. This year you'll see like in Yankee Stadium where people be coming around with the popcorn, hot dog and drinks peanuts and things. to you. you. You purchase right there. Mm -hmm. No VAT on it. You're just like it'll be VAT inclusive. So, you know, you know $5.15 it to be 5 or $10 inside and outside the stadium. Those vendors are the beneficiaries of these events because they, they do extremely well. I'll tell you one story that always shocks me. A young lady, she came there, we gave her 
She does fritters. She did like, you know, conch fritters, but she does shrimp. She does lobster, all kind of fritters, just fritters. And we got her a stall in the second edition, I think it was 2014. Her mom was a maid in Life with Key. Her, sorry, her grandmother was a maid in Life with Key. Her mom was a maid at, at, at Paradise Island at the time. She became a maid at Atlantis. Gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning, leaves her kids, goes over there. She's making, you know, 20, 25,000 a year, but pushing really hard a year. That weekend, this lady did $25,000 Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But Danny, don't tell us the people. Did. Did not get this? I won't say her name. What, what I'm saying, economic stimulus. So she, something clicked in her head. She's like, you know what? Nothing wrong with being a maid now. But she says, you know, I made more my on annual a salary in a weekend. In comparison. And, and I have to get, I get up every day to go out and slave for the same amount of money. And I could do this in one weekend. I, we, so that must click in your head. Well, hold on. How do you get more people to now do their own thing, go into another space, if you're working for money, and you make the same amount of money in one week? Now, let's talk about this. There's a couple of things I want to know. One, I want to know whether or not there are any opportunities uh, that you afford, uh, if the government has identified opportunities to be able to empower those particular vendors who may need more product. Because yes. you know who we are. Yes. You know who we are. The answer is yes. So this is economic How we can get that? You have, to, you have to, small business uh, association, small business entrepreneur thing, they help these people get up and running. And it's a small, it's a little kickstart. And then you have got to support But you can buy them. a product. Correct. And you, okay. could, you get your stuff, and then that kickstart gets you going, and you see, boy, you know, I can generate some of these things myself. Once you manage it properly. In this environment. Mm -hmm. Right. You've got... 20,000 people for, you know, for a whole weekend, you could do some things with that scale. See, we got to get to scale in the Bahamas and always think entrepreneurship opportunity. And this is what we get out of these events for those who are into that. I mean, some people are not into that, but those who are, this is, this is important. One more thing, um, um, and then I got to let you go. I got one more set of tickets to give, to, to give away. I'd need to know about diversification, and I'm talking mm -hmm. about within the islands of the Bahamas. I think a lot of things have been concentrated on Nassau, mm -hmm. and it places people into this kind of set mm -hmm. that says uh, everything is Nassau-centric. Now, I know that uh, this administration, especially with the intent of being able to expand uh, the concepts and ideas that you have, uh, seeks to be able to empower all the islands. How now is this going to be able to affect Grand Bahama, uh, Abaco, Eleuthera, and other islands who are enthusiasts, mm -hmm. but not necessarily being able to taste a piece of this pie? Correct. So one thing, we want those islands to come to Nassau to participate in this if they wish. Okay. This is not only for Nassau people. So those people listening to you in the family of islands, this is also for you. The tickets start at 20 bucks. You, you can... I hope people can find their way to that. Secondly, the different kinds of sporting and entertainment events you can bring are sometimes better suited to other islands than Nassau. So the cycle, we're having a big cycling thing coming. You know, Eleuthera really does the most amazing cycling um, uh, event you could imagine. They have the guys who run, who'd run the Harley Davidson uh, races. So they, it's not really a race, but they do like an island tour and they come in on a cruise ship, they bring the bikes. Grand Bahama is the place for that man. And these fellas, they're going to spend from Pindon's Point to the eight, eight Mile Rock, West End. They're going to do the whole island. And it's a wonderful thing to see. So I think different things should go to different islands. And then the way this works, you, you set it up where every year, like, so every year you set this up where they're coming back. That's how Daytona Beach works. Mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how Monaco works, mm -hmm. right? That's how Wimbledon works. The mm -hmm. people in Wimbledon, which is a little town in England, it's a rinky-dinky little town. Mm -hmm. They make all their money for the year during the two weeks of Wimbledon. That's it. That's it. That's it. The rest are they hanging out, going to the show, doing it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So our concept of you slaving every day, cleaning, doing all this stuff, that is not modern life. Let's offer our people something different. America's Cup Sailing. We are 100,000 miles of ocean. America's Cup Sailing, which is one of the biggest races in the world, sponsored by Rolex. You know, we used to have a Rolex office right here at Albany. Okay? That has asked, can we take a look at having a race in the Bahamas? We don't do that in Nassau. 
That's Exuma, Cat Island, Lutra, Abaco. I mean, this America Cup sailing. What about, what about, um, because I've gotten some significant calls. As you know, I'm from Eight Mile Rock. Mm-hmm. I've gotten some significant, some significant calls for West End, for East End, and possibilities of being able to do some sporting stuff there. Uh, in the event that we have, that there are persons out there who have relationships, and uh, they want to be able to, um, you know, empower themselves by being able to... Who can they speak to? Do they speak with you? Do they go to the office of the prime minister about formally creating a concept to be able to have one of these events to support what you're doing for the diversification of tourism? Who can they speak to if they have one of these events on their heart and they want to kind of flesh it out? Myself, Chester Cooper, Ginger Moxie, ultimately the prime minister. He signs off on it. I'll get it done. I do special ops for the PM. That's my real job, apart from my own office. Special ops? I do special ops. That's one of my special teams. (laughs) My God. (laughs) You can call the splits. All right, all right. I do special. (laughs) So so any of us, and we can get it done. Grand Bahama has a special place in my heart, man. You're going to hear some stuff later this summer that that is going to revive a lot of their product. I used to go up there for a boat race. It was from Miami to, to Grand Bahama. You know, West End, and you're from West End. Uh, West End is 49 miles from Donald Trump's doorstep in West Palm Beach. 49 miles. You know, the biggest real estate deals happening right now in all of the Americas are happening in West Palm Beach. And you are 49 miles away. This is a heavy conversation that you're having. 49 miles away. You're having this heavy conversation with me, and simultaneously, we're looking in the news, but let's not even go there. There is relationships to be had yeah. for the growth of not only Grand Bahama, yeah. but for the Bahamas. The Bahamas. And you sit in the front of me, all these wonderful stuff. I'm excited to be able to see these things. Before you go, let me give away these last two tickets. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to answer the phone. Please give me your information. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Howard. Good afternoon. How you doing? I'm good. Good afternoon, Dr. Johnson. Good afternoon, ma'am. How you doing? So you I'm won great. these tickets. I got a pair of tickets for you. Can you give me a name? My name is Nashida Evans. Nashida with an N? N, yes. Mm-hmm. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Nashida Evans. Yes, sir. Okay, Miss Evans, we got the tickets here. I'm going to be able to leave it at the desk downstairs for you. Uh, say, tell uh, Dr. Danny Johnson, thank you so much. I can thank see whether or not so he can leave me with some more things for you, all right? <laughs> thank I, I, you, I, thank I have you. four more to leave him with. You got four more to leave yeah. me with. Ladies and gentlemen, we can give <laughs> those things up. All right, Nashida, don't hang up now. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Relax yourself. Don't okay, hang up. Okay. All right, so we can thank put you on hold, and he's going to take your name and number and information. You can come pick it up. Yes, all right? sir. Thank you. All right. Enjoy the world, really. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with uh, Dr. Danny Johnson again, being able to tell us about exactly what's happening for the World Relays between uh, May 5th, May 4th and 5th, 4th and 5th May 4th yeah. and 5th, 2024, Chase the Sun, it's Paradise to Paris, all the information's in there, Thomas A. Robertson Stadium, we gave away eight tickets, we got four more tickets to give away, we're going to be able to do those things over the course of the next conversation, if you had a chance to be able to catch these tickets, you can go to World Relay Bahamas 24, correct? Yep. World Relay Bahamas 24.org and pick those up, they start at 20 bucks and you want to be able to participate, there's no need for us to have this relentless this conversations about being able to activate something if you don't participate we need social community participation let them see our flavor let them see our, our style the way that we actually are enthusiastic about support for the bahamas we want to see all you guys out there and we're grateful to have this kind of a conversation with you dr and, Donnie. And, and also howard i want to let people know that um, jamaicans have called and um they, they well they ordered uh, must be a thousand tickets we're like no we can't give out a thousand we have to reduce the amount of tickets we can let go at They will buy all the tickets. And so the guy called back and he says, well, I'm going to take 100 a day. So and that's what he's doing. Bahamians better get, get in gear. We only have 15,000 seats in this stadium. My God. Right? And I think we might be close to 10,000 sold now. Ladies so and gentlemen, get your tickets. Get World in gear, Relay Bahamas 24.org. It's or gonna you can be a go sold down. out event. Where you where can you go to, to purchase the tickets? Uh, the hard copy. Andre Rogers hard copy. You can go to Andre Rogers. You can also go to any BTC um, uh, outlet. That you know, BTC is the title sponsor, and so you can go to BTC. And there's a box office at BTC Marathon and any other BTC you go to, but the main box office is at Andre Rogers National Stadium. 
um, at that roundabout. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to take this commercial break and get back and talk about these things. We thank you so much. Sparky says hello. Hey, he wants Sparky. to let you know that. All right. As Sparky says hello. He said, tell Danny, say, as Sparky say hello. So Sparky says hello. Hi, Sparky. Right. We're here, guys. We're talking about these things. Make sure you pick this up. When we get back, we're going to hit you up with these other four tickets that we have here. But we got we want to say congratulations to all those persons who has been able to receive these tickets. I see that the lines are lit right up. You got to let me take this commercial break, get to news, and be right back after this. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. Bonneville Bones, established in 1970, is the leader in men's fashion in the Bahamas. We're conveniently located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza, and fully stocked with everything you need for all occasions. Our Harbor Bay location is one door north of Alive, with the black and white signage of Bonneville Boutique. Both locations are open from 10 to 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Bonneville Bones and Bonneville Boutique, still the leader in men's fashion. Located in the Mall at Marathon and the Harbor Bay Shopping Plaza. Give me a beat! Calling all Alive Postmate customers. Paying your Postmate bill in full this month can mean winning tickets to see Janet Jackson live at the Atlantis. Miss Jackson the Atlantis. That's right. Make your payment through the My Alive app be alive by April 23rd and be automatically entered. Winner will be announced on April 24th, so don't wait. Start paying for your chance to win. Alive, the perfect connection for everyone. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Why settle for an ordinary burger when you can indulge in the new farmhouse king at Burger King Nassau? Sink your teeth into two juicy flame-grilled beef patties piled high with crisp bacon, American cheese, crispy onions, a fried egg, and a spicy mayo sauce that adds bold flavor to every bite. Enjoy the new farmhouse king as a combo with fries and a drink, or if you're feeling extra hungry, try the King's Feast, available exclusively at Burger King Nassau. <laughs> Bring your family, bring your friends, bring your gal. Come witness history in the making at the 2024 World Athletic Relays Chase the Sun, Paradise to Paris. Happening here in Nassau, Bahamas. Hundreds of the best runners from more than 40 countries will compete for their place in the 2024 Paris Olympics, May 4th and 5th at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Get your tickets early at worldrelaysbahamas24.org or at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium box office. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. The foundation. And we are back for the last few minutes before we get out of here. You know we got to go to 1 o'clock news. But I wanted to kind of end the session with Danny, uh, Dr. Danny Johnson in here in the studio with us. There is, uh, I'm always wide-eyed when I hear these prospects and ideas about futuristic concepts that can work in the Bahamas. Uh, just quickly on the break, just talking about the concepts and ideas. Guys, I want to encourage you, man. Find a way to be able to touch these persons with an idea that exists in your heart. I think a lot of us have kind of stayed back and pulled back from being able to, to let persons know our ideas and our hearts are fair that someone can teeth it. Someone's going to do this. Someone's mm -hmm. going to do that. Danny, talk to that. Talk to them and let persons know what they are to, to be able to kind of quench this, this, this desire, this kind of an idea that no boy, Bahamian fellas is, is teeth. They don't do this. Let them know that you want to participate, you want to partner for the growth and development and sustainability of this industry and entrepreneurialism in the Bahamas. Country without economy, right? You, the, the soundness of ecology to nature is what it is for human beings in their country. You've got to have an economy. We have the opportunity here of these beautiful islands and great spaces. Everyone wants to come, and so we've got to put our ideas on the table, and you need government. This is not politics. See, in the Bahamas, we, we, we play too much politics, once yeah. election over, for me, my politics over. Get back to governing. Government is a regulator and a facilitator. We set regulations for the public good, 
for our safety and prosperity. And we are, governments are to protect and provide a level of safety and prosperity for its people. That's the regulations. Once you met them, we are to facilitate you as Citizen X in fulfilling your dream. Like fellas go to the United States because they got the American dream. Well, you're supposed to be able to bring your dream, and we're supposed to say, how can we help? And I should be proud of you as a young Bahamian becoming wealthy, becoming famous, becoming successful, and your family does great things. Why? That's during my tenure. That young woman who, who became an yeah. entrepreneur. You called and, my name all the time. And instead of being a maid. I mean, hell, every time I see Sayboy Johnson, look here. Thank you, man. I'm doing good. By God. And they will, they, it's for them. I, 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 I had a good run. I'm not rich, but I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. My job now, do it for someone else. Mm -hmm. This is why I love this idea of relays. Pass it on. Miles Monroe in his final, some of his final sermons, man, he talked about the wisdom of passing it on. Passing the baton. You got to pass the thing on. That's socially, that's politically, that is spiritually, economically, spiritually. Everything. It's time for the old guard to recognize that it's important to empower the next generation. Yeah, And we need them because they have the information and know how to experience. They've been through this before. They even have visions that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. And we need all that translated, transferred, passed on to us. So in my head, I keep going back at World Relays to let our people know we are world-class people. Mm -hmm. You are, as, as a Bahamian, as Selenian used to tell, you can do anything you want in the world mm -hmm. at a certain standard. Pass it on. Well, guys, it's a 1 o'clock. Uh, we're here at the 1 o'clock spot. Uh, I'm going to take these four telephone calls, and uh, we're going to leave some tickets there for those particular persons, and I'll call your name when we get back on air. Dr. Danny Johnson, I want to thank you so very kindly for being able to join us today. We're going to continue to be able to push this for you uh, May 4th to 5th. 2024, Chase the Sun, Paradise to Paris, all the information's in there. Please pick up your tickets, worldrelaybahamas24.org, worldrelaybahamas24, all the information's in there. I want you to participate. Shouts out to Carolyn, to Angela, to uh, Nashida. All the information's in there. We're going to take that. We're going to put your tickets downstairs, and we got four more tickets to give away. We thank you, my brother. Any, uh, anything else you want to give away? Uh, no, no. Well, I would, I would like to give away this piece of advice to Bahamians. Oh, know. I thought it was a piece of property. Treat, treat, one, to treat one another well. <laughs> you know, love one another as Christ had loved us. And for people like you, Howard, put your dream on the table, and if we could help you, consider it done. Listen to me. He ain't going to say that twice. I don't like this man or as a black man. No man me like skin, you know. <laughs> We're going to be able to do these things, guys. Quick commercial break. Get to news and be right back after this. The Foundation. Foundation. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Nassau, Bahamas. Foundation. Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. The Foundation. Foundation, the foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Marco's is bringing you a pizza experience like never before. Introducing our new pizzoli baked with house-made dough. Stuffed with three fresh cheeses and premium toppings. Spiced with irresistible garlic sauce and Romachon seasoning for only $8.95. More incredible toppings, buffalo chicken, pepperoni, chicken bacon ranch, and pepperoni and sausage. Order now at MarcosPizzaBahamas.com. Every store, every day. Because this is not just pizza, it's the Italian way.
Do you have uncontrollable debt? Are you ready to make that move to Fidelity for a stress-free future? These loans have a built-in savings plan that pays you unbeatable interest. Ask about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Fidelity, we're good for you. Foundation. The 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 foundation. And we are back. 96.9 FM radio, Howard Grant. In your company, guys, I'm going to open up the lines. I got two more tickets. So it's essentially four tickets. Give me a call, 323-6232. 325-4316. All the information's in there. Please give me a call. BTC World Athletes Relay, Bahamas 24. Eastern Grandstand Adult Tickets. Available for you guys. Lines are open. Telephone caller on the line. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. How you doing? I'm good. My name is Dawn. Hi, Dawn. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks. You just called just to, to shoot the breeze with me, or? No, I called for the tickets. You don't want to talk to me. You just want tickets. <laughs> you all have something else, but I'm gonna go fight you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don. Don, what's your last name? Let me put your last name here. You got your tickets available for you. Thank you, Dean. D A W N, right? Yes. D A W N. Don Dean. Yeah. Okay, Don Dean. Uh, Turks Island Dean. Sorry. This is Turks Island Dean. No. <laughs> this is, I know Dean's from Ti. Praise Jesus for you. Thank you, Miss Dean. Stay on the Thank line. You too. Let them take your information, and you can be able to come and pick up your tickets down here. Okay. Okay. Stay Thank on the you. line. Pick up your information. Okay, no problem. Hold on. Also, make sure Carolyn Moss. Carolyn, we didn't get your number and information. I think I accidentally hung up the line. Moss, call back uh, and give my producer the information. Say, just, just let him know that this is Carolyn, and uh, we can get the information and uh, make sure that we can be able to put it on there so nobody can pick up your thing. Ice, Carolyn, sir. You don't look like a Carolyn. You need to stop. All right? So make sure you give me the information. All right, we got one more set of tickets to be able to give away. This is the last one, any, mini, miny, mo. We're going to go with this line right here, right? Call on the line with this live. Go ahead. Hi, Howard. Calling for two of those tickets. You're calling for two of those tickets. You got it. I got it. I Woo! got it. Oh, yes, I got it. <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. I got it. Praise I God. Hey, Howard. You're church people. You, you, well, praise God. You taking this sweet thing with you? <laughs> My God, this could yes, be a sir. good weekend. All right, give this me a full name. Let me put your name down here. Denise Johnson. Denise Johnson. Yes, sir. All right, Miss Johnson, we got you straight. Donnie's your cousin? No, 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 no. He can, I, I can make him my cousin. He can, can be my good cousin. cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Denise. Stay on the line. The producer will take your information, your number, and so forth and so okay, on. Okay, thank you. And then you. we'll leave the tickets right here for you, okay? Thank you. Okay, no problem. We have all the stuff laid out for you guys. We got Carolyn, we got Angela, we got Natisha, uh, we got Dawn, and we got Denise. We got all this information here, and the tickets are, they're gone. Okay? So if you're calling, you're only, because I ain't got no more tickets. That he says is he's going to send some more tickets with us and uh, leave some more tickets here for those particular persons. We were able to give away uh, six pairs of tickets. That's 12 tickets he gave us today. I'm grateful to him to kind of have these conversations and whatnot and talk about these things. It's always, um, um, it's a wonderful thing that you have innovative persons still being able to work around uh, leadership. Uh, I don't think I've ever, have I? I think Danny and I actually had one conversation over the course of my career here in media, maybe one time, when I was on More 94. I can remember one time. But uh, the very quick conversation with, he, with him just now made me to understand that he is truly an asset. Just this off the mic, off the mic telephone call, a quick conversation. 
he is truly an asset to um, this administration. And based upon his vision and his outlook for the fiscal standpoint, but from a nationalistic standpoint, he is truly an asset point blank. So Danny, I want to thank you so much, man. I want to thank you for your contribution and still being around the proximity of political leadership in the country and steering um, these guys in the right direction. So it's always good to be able to hear and, and you know, hear from and see persons that are still pushing, still pushing for national growth and development in the country. Guys, the tickets are gone. The tickets are gone. G-O-N-E. Producer, you make sure you get those numbers for me, please, and uh, all those particular persons in there. And you can do that. All those persons, if you have, uh, if you want tickets with us today, I ask you to do me a favor. If you're listening to me, text me at 827-0111. Text me. Text Howard Grant at 827-0111. And I'll be able to kind of register who those persons are to ensure that we can set these things up properly and leave the information downstairs for you, okay? It's going to be with Jenny. You can just come right over here to The Guardian and pick it right up. When you walk downstairs, you're going to talk to Jennifer. She's going to meet you at the front office uh, with a smile, and she'll have your tickets available for you. Just give her your first name, your last name, your telephone number. We'll put all that information on the receive that for you to go enjoy yourself May 4th and 5th at the World Relays. All right, guys. Um, we've had sufficient conversations about World Relays. Now, let's talk about some stuff. Uh, the lines are going to be wide open if you want to participate in national discussion about where we are from that particular standpoint. Crime is down 21% um, in 2023, but rapes are up, which is a peculiar thing. Uh, the first thing that popped in my head was this sort of an idea of a vile something what would make someone be charged from a sexual standpoint what would make beyond the natural inclination a desire to be able to you know to engage in these things what would make this happen I think to myself for these things this is there is an underlying reason that murders may be down but rapes are up there's something going on. And whether we can put our finger directly on it, we should at least have conversations around it until we reach the point that we have clarity as a community as to exactly what's happening. There is something happening here. If I'm going to be absolutely clear with you and honest, there is something happening. And we're looking at a generation of can I say vipers? Oh, man. I hate to get biblical, but I, there's no way around this. What would make my, you know what I did? My telephone, I, I hooked it up to my Bluetooth in my car. So anytime I pop in now, I configure my phone to the position. I think it was accidental, but I configured the phone to a position where, um, when I pop in there, automatically the Samsung, because I'm not the iPhone guy, the Samsung pops up and connects with the, the bank of audio that you have set up. Did, did this ever happen to you? You set up your phone with the Samsung to be able to do all these things so you can hear it, what's going on in your phone. And automatically, whatever you have stored up, whatever voice notes some people send you, whatever, they, they, they just start playing in your phone. So this morning I popped into the car, uh, getting ready to come here, and uh, my show from last year played. You remember when we talked about the first show that we did when we assisted the young lady who was raped? I, I hate to think about it. When we assisted the young lady who was raped at, um, when we found her, we, found, we knew her mother, we gave her some money, so forth and so on. When I went looking for this, it just popped up on my phone. And so I'm listening to it. I say, I wonder what show was this? And then I listen. I say, well, why do I sound like this? Why do I sound tired and, and, and sleepy? So I'm listening to the entire thing. And then I listen to myself starting to talk about this kind of a, this position where I couldn't understand, and I still don't. What would make a man intrigued, aroused, sexually, 
to be able to pursue such a child. And now we come, first thing today, and we look at this. Crime down 21%, but rapes are up by 11%. I look at this, and then I ask myself the question. If you broke, why are you thinking about sex? If there is an occupational problem, if there is an economic problem where you don't have any money, why even think about sex? Is it just me? Is, is it just me? What time is it? The kids ain't in the car. Is it just me? Is, is it just me? I can't even think if I'm not in a comfortable position in terms of financially, so forth and so on, if I can't take care of my responsibilities, I can't even think about, unless I'm in a relentless uh, stupor and I want to be able to kind of numb myself out, right? I can't even think about pleasuring myself if I cannot provide for myself and my family. If we're having so much issues in the country, why are so many persons running after this? That means that they're not pursuing work. They're not thinking of ways and means to take care of themselves and their families. This is a generation of vipers. A generation of lazy men and women who have retreated to sex work and retreated to the lowest common denominator for the retention or the acquisition of money. This is a lazy, lazy group. And when we start to have and it, 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 it trickles down from all aspects. I just want to be decent with this. It trickled down, for me, it trickles down from all aspects. It trickles down from government. Because I ask myself this thing. I don't, there's nothing I bring before you that I don't really fight myself over. Am I doing this? Um, am I hypocritical in this particular position? Am I doing my part? Am I working on these things? How dare you talk about this if you're still working on these particular things? It's just me. I never want to be a hypocrite. I never want to be placed in a position where I levy condemnation and rain fire and brimstone down and find myself doing the same thing and find myself guilty of these particular infractions. But I look at this and I keep asking myself the question, when we see statistical data and information come to the forefront, what do we do to try to find the root cause of these things? What divisions, what elements, what individuals do we have in strategic positions that can look from a panoramic standpoint and identify the social infractions, if by only by, by data alone, and make a determination as to the core issue that's happening? And rather being able to try to fix the issue from top to bottom or from bottom to top, whatever awkward way that we're going to be able to do this, right? By how we go to the absolute core of where this issue starts from and rectify this. There is no division in the government of the Bahamas that's concerned about that. There may be individuals within certain segments, sectors, divisions, departments that have this in their heart but as a pronouncement from the Bahamas government to identify these things, identify those persons and push towards being able to rectify this issue, there's nothing. Rape is not a casual thing. It's not a casual thing. I cannot remember at any point in my childhood where we had significant conversations about the opposite sex and how we conduct ourselves amongst the opposite sex. I cannot. We have, by virtue of non-engagement, of sheer 
turning our face away from it by deliberate ignorance, right? We have created and perpetuated, expanded this culture of where we see rape coming to the forefront. Let me take you back. When I was eighth grade, seventh grade, sixth, seventh grade, can be decent. Eighth grade, we started to do other things. Sixth, seventh grade. Uh, this was the late 80s, early 90s. Late 80s, early 90s, the transition from 80s to 90s. There was a time where we would put the mirror, young boys would put a mirror on our shoe. Right? I don't know if I was a participant in this at any point because I was always big. So I don't think I participated in this like this, but I knew that this was happening. You would put a mirror on your shoe and your laces, so forth and so on, distract the girl, talk to her. Somebody else put the mirror underneath her skirt and we could be able to live absolutely perverted. But this is what we learned. This is what we saw from the Simpsons and the progressive early 90 television shows that really led us to indescribable debauchery as young children. The introduction of these particular things. We've become charged sexually and no one curbed or quenched the, our desire as young men to pursue these things. These young men grow up to be older men. This is a beyond getting spiritual. I don't have to talk spirituality to you. I don't have to say there's a perverted spirit upon them. But yeah, we could, there's absolutely, that's, that's, that's a given. But this is a, a train, this is a habit of indecency that's been perpetuated and never identified, never called out in our society. No one in school ever deals with this. There is a social expectation that we should know to be decent to the, to the opposite sex. Our decency only exists in the proximity of authority. That means you only could trust us as far as you could throw us. That's it. Your decency only exists in the midst of authority. After you go and you turn your back in decency, cut off. How are we going to deal with this, ladies and gentlemen? There is no way that you should look at a woman in this day and age and think, hmm, I should rape her. She can give me that. There is no way that after all that we've gone through, after the socialization that happened in our society for us to know how to get to this particular position, there is no way that you should be fighting a woman for her situation or a man. Let's be decent. Let's talk about this. I've come to the conclusion in this dispensation that our issue is language and understanding. There's no comprehension. I want to give you this one thing. I never understood what dating is. I hate the idea. Oh, we're dating. What the hell is dating? So I said, culturally, that's inappropriate. No one, no one understands the concept of dating in our culture. Me and my wife talk, and my daughter, my 16-year-old daughter. No, daddy, well, dating is, dating is what? Dating is the introduction to casual sex. No, daddy, that's not what dating is. I say, okay, so tell me what dating is. Well, you're getting to know if you like each other. I said, that, well, that doesn't make any sense. Ask your mother if she ever been on a date. And she said, well, yeah, what do you mean? I said, have you ever been on a date with any other boys, any other fellas? Well, I've never been. And I said, you've never been on a date. Never. When I met you, I told you I want you to be my wife. From that juncture forward, this is courtship. Courtship has an objective. At the end of this, there should be a ceremony with formality. What courtship is, it ends in a position of formality. Even with 
the limited concept and idea of our vocabulary back in the day. The way that we describe relationships even gave us an understanding that there was a cost to travel. What we used to say. Or, we just go. Going indicates that there is a direction. Dating is merely marking time. That's it. You date milk. My God. That's it. You date cereal. You, it's, it's an on-brand packaging that gives you a very clear understanding that there exists a born-on date and an expiry date. An expiry date. That's all dating is. The sheer concept and idea of dating shows you that the inevitability of separation. And if you're using dating as a Christian, as a man or woman of faith, you're using it wrong. It should be an objective beyond this point. Socially, we are traveling around the proverbial mulberry bush without an object. We are trying to feel out all that we can. And hopefully, we're intrigued enough to retain this for a small time period. But there's no true objective. This is why the increase in rape. Because there is a false narrative associated with what our responsibilities are. This concept and idea of being able to open to every spirit, every concept, every idea, every whim globally, incorporating that locally, you are confusing our generation. They don't know culture. They don't know responsibility. They don't have respect. They are vipers. And we've created these monsters. only for us to gasp in years to come and say, oh my God, I can't believe that Johnny did that. You've never done anything to curb this, nor did you feel the necessity to have an honest conversation. My son is in the bathroom for three hours. We got to talk, sir. You're not constipated. What's going on? Well, Daddy, you didn't, of course, but my father never spoke to me about it. But he didn't understand the spiritual implications and covenants that I was forging through my education. I understood. So let me tell you. It is our responsibility with the acquisition of information, education, and exposure to treat and teach the next generation. We're not doing that. Let's have a clear conversation, guys. I want to take this commercial break. I want you guys to participate. I'm going to open up the lines and talk about these things. Rape is up. Rape is up. And we're still in this kind of a position where, well, it's not a necessity for us to talk about it. Quick commercial break. Be right back after this. The Foundation. The Foundation. Do you have uncontrollable debt? Are you ready to make that move to Fidelity for a stress-free future? These loans have a built-in savings plan that pays you unbeatable interest. Ask about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Fidelity, we're good for you. Marco's is bringing you a pizza experience like never before. Lee baked with house-made dough. Stuffed with three fresh cheeses and premium toppings. Spiced with irresistible garlic sauce and Romachon seasoning for only $8.95. Choose from four incredible toppings. Buffalo chicken, pepperoni, chicken bacon ranch, and pepperoni and sausage. Order now at MarcosPizzaBahamas.com. Every store, every day. Because this is not just pizza, it's the Italian way. Hey. 
Radio. Are you ready for the best of the best? Keep the Vibe Alive Music Group up for sound promotion. And Guardian Radio presents the best of the best Raken Script Explosion Concert. Mark your calendars for May 11th as Super Club Breezes grounds Ignite with Bahamian Talent. Featuring KB, Gino D, Funky D, Veronica Bishop, The Brylanders, Avi, Elon Moxie, and Shine242. Join the Falcons, Iron Store, Phil Pierre, Johnny Cake, Mama D, Nishi LS, Pat Rami, Stevie S, and Shad Collie and the VIPs for an electrifying night of music and culture. Tickets are flying, so grab yours now. Available online at BahamasEtickets.com or swing by the Beauty Shack on Soldier Road and Carmichael Road. This is the event of the year. The best of the best rake and scrape explosion at Breezes Resorts. Gates open at 6 p.m. Don't miss out on the Bahamian magic. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. You can buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Now is the time to reach your Grand Bahama market with affordable packages, including print and digital. Call GB News Sales Representative Kavandre at 822-6717 or message him on WhatsApp for ad rates. Classified ads are now available every Tuesday as well. Keep up with everything Grand Bahamian every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. The excitement, the fierce competition, the entertainment. On May 4th and 5th, our Bahamian athletes will compete with hundreds of the best from around the world to secure their spot in the Paris Olympics. Gardner takes the title. Come witness history as our athletes chase the sun from paradise to Paris at the 2024 World Athletic Relays. May 4th and 5th at the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. Get your tickets now at worldrelaysbahamas24.org or at the Andre Rogers Baseball Stadium box office. Foundation. Foundation. The foundation. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, 96.9 FM radio. Howard Grant in your company, the foundation. It is a glorious day just being able to kind of muddle over our position as human beings in the Bahamas. I don't know, man. I'm I'm okay. So I've come to grips with the reality that life is an opportunity. I've come to, I think, with in my walk in faith, it has made me to understand the fragile nature of life, the ups and downs of life, the ebbs and flows, the frequency and inconsistency on the path that we chose. And I've come to a very clear understanding that what will be will be. I've come to an understanding in my, my position. This is, this is only me. This is me. This exists within my mind and my spirit. That if the steps of a good man are ordered by God, first and foremost, you don't say you're good, but your conviction propels you to move in a particular direction. And if your conviction and your commitment to divinity, to God, to your faith, propels you in a particular direction, you know that your steps are being ordered. And sometimes your feet take you into troubled waters. Can I get an amen? My God, I just be straight with us. Let's be straight. Sometimes your steps takes you into economic deprivation. Let's talk straight. Let's talk straight. We ain't got to go over nobody head. Sometimes your steps just take you into my Jesus, I broke. God, I broke. Sometimes your steps just take you into, Lord, why my son died? Why did my daughter die? Why did my mother die? Sometimes these steps take you at cancer. I found a lump. Sometimes these steps take you into troubled waters that you never imagined to a point where some people ball their fists and forget their faith and shake it at the heavens and say, why me? These are the steps of a man. These are the steps of a man. These steps take you into... Why did they break, be, break into my house? Why did my child get shot? These steps take you into uncharted territory throughout the lineage of your family. These, these steps, but your conviction, your faith, your, your reading says to you, these steps are ordered. But Jesus, you ordered me to come here. 
My God, I lost my job to Alukayo, the hotel. And I'll just shut your mouth up and listen to the story. Every time I say the hotel, you all say, how are you? Oh, don't roll your eye. Listen to the story. My, I lost the job. I pawned all my jewelry. I didn't tell you this story. Paul, I had one beautiful necklace, uh, one chain, Cuban link chain, and uh, beautiful bracelet, ring, everything. Yeah, you work at the hotel, you make money, praise God. These things. Now, I look good every time I clean. I shiny, but I broke. And I've never been this broke before. Never. Not the history of my life as a child. 15 years old, I had money in my pocket. I used to work for my as a child. I had money. 12 years old, if I needed money, I go um, uh, sell fritters and, and, and freezy and this and that, the next thing. I had money in my pocket. And you didn't need much then. But I had the money. I was an independent man, but my dependency was always on God. So he always provided for me. This is the very first time in the midst of formality and me committing myself to God. Formally, as an older man, because you do this in, when you're young, when you go off to, to, to church, when you go off to these conventions and so forth and so on, you make these declarations without understanding and no one teaches you these things. But now with formality, education, maturity and understanding, you make this, you articulate this to the universe and you align yourself with your convictions and your faith. So now you walk in. And my expectation is, is Lord, I don't know where you can take me, whether or not this is going to be leading me to church in terms of me becoming a pastor, because I, I always knew I speak well, uh, but I didn't know what to do with this. So I said, well, maybe this is for pastoring. I start figuring out if I'm supposed to be a pastor. Jesus, I lost my job. Job and me and my pastor fall out. Because he forget all the money I was given to him, and now I find myself in this kind of a hardship. And he said, I'm not going to get into what God dealing with with you. I won't dare intervene. And I said, what the hell are you talking about? Are you talking about anyway? Long story short, I pawned my jewelry and open up a restaurant. Now, for the purposes of appeasing and appealing to uh, the faith that is in me, and trying to convince myself that I'm still doing the right thing, I never pronounced the bar, but it was literally a bar. Can I say this to you? And in the midst of me being able to open up the restaurant and bar the restaurant portion fell off. I couldn't do anything anymore. And I found myself one night entertaining people with alcoholic beverages, trying to figure out how am I going to pay my bills. And I had a drink. Well, the Anglican in me took a little bit too much, praise God. But I had a drink. And then I had another. And now I find myself with the cup to my head, my nose in the cup, music ringing off in this bar that I play in, girls in the corner dancing, inebriated. I'm looking at the entire thing, and I'm praying while I drink it. And I say, Jesus Christ, what am I doing here? And only in retrospect, I could say to you that that step still led me to the purpose that God called me to. It led me to a position where I can fortify my testimony and deliver it to you. To let you know that no matter what you go through, the steps of a good man are still ordered by God. And I think I needed to say that to you today. The issue that we have in this country is that we've forgotten our steps. That we walk with our steps almost like penguins and our feet to the east and west on the road that is paved with good intentions that leads us to destruction. We're, doing, we're walking on this road as individuals. We're walking on this road as a government. We're walking on this road as organizations. And we forget the greater call of community. And we forget whose we are and who we are, all for the purposes appeasing and appealing to our existence. We got to fix this. We have to find a way to get back to product productivity as a community and have clear conversations about what is right. 
we appeal to everything the world presents to us. And we've forgotten the call that we have in our lives. This is your decency and we'll have a conversation with you with. Lines are open if you want to be able to join in. 3236232, 3254316, Anywhere for the family violence, 242300-5720. Text me 242-422-4796. Call on the line with us live. Go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon, Howard. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Praise nice God. sunny day. Do you have any idea um, maybe when Sparky will be able to call back into the various shows? Anything happening in that regard? You got to call Dwight for that. Uh, directly with him, hey. Yeah, you got to talk to Dwight for that. I understand. Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, thank you All so right. much for your call. I do my best to try to be able to accommodate him, but you know, um, Sparky and the heavy manners, and that's something that Dwight can be able to deal with. But lines, the guys, the lines are wide open. If you want to be able to join in the conversation, we're talking about this. And uh, on a Tuesday, we took it a little bit deep. We took it a little bit deep. We started to talk about the consciousness and the conscious position of the Bahamas. And it's more than just being able to give up social reform. It's about being able to understand the strength that we have as individuals. There is you, it is useless for me, for me, this is me. This is only Howard, don't fight me. It's useless for us to go to church relentlessly and buy suit after suit to present ourselves formal and aligned in faith and never put our hand to the wheel of social reform. It's useless. It's useless for you to carry this faith and idea that Jesus Christ come in for me and I save sanctified and full of grace and you do nothing to be able to contribute to your community. It's, it's, for me, it's oxymoronic. It is contradictory and it's hypocritical. And it's, you live a lie. You live a lie. You might as well be, uh, you know, you might as well have two different lives. You live a lie. To have this faith and never apply it, it's peculiar. To have this faith and believe in something, that it means to me that you never study to show yourself approved. And it means to me that you found yourself in this kind of position that you've never read, that you've never dived into the text, that you never understand these things, that you never pursued anything to be able to fulfill the call that you have on your life. It, 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 put, it places me in the position that, you know, I, I don't know whether or not you guys are even serious about these things. If rape is up, something is up. If your desire to be able to break in to someone's flesh, to find connection, something is up. But that's all this is. Come on, let's just, oh, Jesus. Uh, how would, what kind of conversation are you having today? Let's talk about this. Let me see if I could structure it better in my mind. Intercourse, because I don't know if you pick up the chair in here. Let's be decent. Intercourse is about connection. It's about connection. It's about after we found ourselves in the position where we have courted and we seek to be able to move towards progression and growth, we kick into that DNA defect in us to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue. After we've gone through this courting aspect and identify the flower of our time, and we seek to be able to take that in progression and growth, we seek to connect. That's all we want. That's what human beings yearn. We yearn connection. That's what our desires are. You come in as an individual, for the most part, and you seek to be able to connect. That's what community is all about. That's why this concept and idea that no man is an island. You seek to connect. If you want to skip the first part of courtship and getting to know each other because you are socially awkward, it says to me that there is deprivation in our society and we've not taught children or young people how to connect properly. You've allowed Vibes Cartel and other artists to explain to our younger generation that exchange is no robbery. 
This is bananas. Exchange, which is literally sex work. Exchange is no robbery. They're content with a social contract of acknowledgement for the exchange of funds for the pleasure that you desire without any acknowledgement and understanding the connection that exists in this space. Our day of reckoning is coming. And we are too casual with the approach of being able to speak about the fact that, oh, well, you know, a couple more persons have gotten raped, a few more persons have gotten murdered. All this has to do with our connectivity and our disconnect as a community. Let me take this call. A call on the line. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello. Call. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, but how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. What's happening? All right, all right. Same as you're talking about conflict resolution. Yeah, we're talking about conflict resolution. We're talking about um, an idea of being able to get back as a community. Yeah, but uh, but but we we live in a sexualized culture. Okay, a highly sexualized culture. And the person who goes out there and commits a rape, he's coming into the um, um, culture, into society. He's expressing himself with certain, certain suppositions already in place. Okay? Now, rules and laws are in place for all this stuff. But our where you you know you 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 head back to eighteen eighteen sixteen or sixteen nineteen and you see where the African American the um, black man he was put into a situation where he had to um he had to like generate income for an economy. And he had the father children to be sold. But I don't think we have gotten away from that platform yet. Okay, because you know, we still have persons of color. You know, they still around here acting like slave masters. Even if they only pay in rent, they still act like a slave master. And the children that come into this, in the the children that come into this into this environment, have not been brought up with a proper view of how, of of how real life is supposed to work. You know, now folks may study their Bible as much as they want to, but if they don't take in what the Word of God has to say about their behavior, especially in their own nation. We are going to always have this problem, you know. Now, I don't know if you, if, if you see this, you know, but if you scroll into the upper numbers on Cable Bahamas, you know, some very explicit stuff is available just in your home off your TV, you know. And the nonsense is our kids have to have to put a bit on their phones now, you know. Mm-hmm. The stuff they have access to, you know, it, it kind of compounds the problem, man. Well, What? It's a good subject, Howard. I appreciate you, my brother. Okay, Thank you buddy. so much. Thank you so much. I want to talk more about this, this concept and idea of dating. I do. I want, I want, I want to talk about it. I, I want to be able to debunk this concept and idea of dating. And I also want to debunk the concept and idea of a high-value man. And any other foolishness that you incorporate into your daily conversations that, that has drifted over the waters from the United States of America into your minds and spirits in your homes. This is absolute garbage. What the hell is a high-value man in our society? What is a high-value man? Let's look at the economics of this thing. The only value that my, I, don't know, I, I don't even have the time. I don't, even have, I don't even have the time. You assess value based upon acquisition. 
you assess value in a man based upon your observation, based upon acquisition, based upon what you can see of this particular man. All right? Whether that's uh, physically, whether that's spiritually, whether that's verbally, whether that's in his environment, financially, otherwise. You assess value based upon acquisition and retention. That's it. So through observation, you can see a high value man. But God doesn't judge the outside. Only man does that. How do you assess value without engaging this man? 52 has significant value. I don't know where he is financially. He always tells us he's in the ghetto and so forth and so on. And the tribulation that he's gone through and living in the inner city and all these things. But he has significant value that he releases on a day-to-day -day basis here on the radio. And that's only substance that he filled himself with. And he can release on the radio. And in any space. And he can articulate and understand. And weave things together, concepts and ideas to speak to the Bahamian people, to speak to anyone. How can we assess value from the external and we as Christians, as believers, as men and women in faith who are to study and show ourselves approved have incorporated these concepts and ideas on pulpits that are supposed to empower spiritually to take you to where you're supposed to be. You have become just as dumb and superficial as the world. What the hell is dating? There is no aim and objective in this. It is though we as a society have lost our proverbial head. Now whether or not you'd like to identify that as leadership, or whether or not you'd like to identify that as faith, we have lost our head. And if our head is gone, then our minds are gone. We are operating in the midst of carnality. That's it. Dogs hump on the side of the road because it is their nature to be able to pursue. Their, their nature is to do these things. They are animals. We differentiate from them significantly. But for the most part, we've been acting like animals locally. Assess themselves and redirect. We're just continuing to push down this course and this abyss. This abyss. Let me take this last telephone call. Caller, go ahead. You got two minutes. Go ahead, caller. How would? How would? Hey, hey, what's up, Anton? Hey, good afternoon. How you doing? What'd you say? It's been a while, um, uh, but nonetheless. Uh, look, you said something just now that forced me to call in. I haven't had an interest in calling in in the last several days. To be, I appreciate to be you. anyone tuning in, where you start to speak about, um, as a society, as a nation, we, we assess, we value people based on um, um, what we can see physically they have acquired and otherwise, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then you spoke about how God operates, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is very powerful, what you said, Howard, because, you know, God never worked through those in any society that he has worked in. He has never worked through those who society considers to be the upper crust mm -hmm. or the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And bear in mind, I only say who society, because that does not mean you are just because society says you are, there's still a proving, a proving because the evidence always lies in the production. In the, and funny thing about it, to move from that, just a little bit for 10 seconds, you spoke about dogs humping publicly. Howard, let's take it back to Adam and Eve. We used to walk around, according to the word, naked. Mm -hmm. And we never knew we were naked. That was the times when God walked the earth with mankind. Only when we entered into sin. And I'm no Bible scholar, but you know, you, you touched on something just now, Howard, that is so interesting. We as a society, even as governments, even as people living day to day, we have things so mixed up. We are falling over things that are right in the front of us, Howard, mm -hmm. when we should not. When our natural 
common sense and wisdom should lead us to recognize and appreciate otherwise. Boy, how would you know? We can expand the same conversation into everything linked to society. I agree with you. Into everything linked to achievement anyway. I know time, so thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you so much for your telephone call. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 2 o'clock. It's just a little something for you to chew on for the day. Uh, You know, let's talk about these things. We keep repeating foolishness. And through our declaration, we're only manifesting foolishness in our society. It's time for us to be able to identify and speak those things as though they are. To be able to see the things that we envision. 